You know, it's, it's, a, it's what's around you. It's, you know, to me, this is like, it's almost like watching the best movie you could ever watch. You know, it goes on around you. And the more you look, the more you see. You know, I mean, I'm quite naive to a lot of people, you know, with wildlife, but oh, I just find it amazing. And I almost, with my fishing, I definitely, I prefer to compete against nature rather than other people around me. I just, oh, it just, you know, it mesmerizes me every time. You know, and they were fascinating, fascinating. I like the ones that have got a little story attached to them, to be honest. I like the ones that are sort of a bit off the beaten track. You know, in the next few years, we're not going to have too many more years of that generation of carp left, the older ones. It'll be a lot more of the stockfish. So I like the ones that have a little funny story attached to them. They're on their own in a the lake. They've got in there with a flood. They've, someone's moved one in there years ago. And, you know, sort of nature intended them like that. That's, that's how I like the feeling of them. It, you know, it just, you know, fascinates me, that little story of how they got there. and out of maybe 200 fish that went in that lake 30, 40 years ago, you know, that one, you know, what, that, that one that grown just bigger than the rest is just unbelievable to me, you know, it just fascinates me. It wasn't until Collingbrook I really met up with a lot, I used to say fish on my own, I was quite alone as a kid, so, you know, I tend to, I didn't really meet a lot of carp anglers as I was sort of got into my 20s and whatever not, a lot of it was just how I fought myself and, it's, yeah, you know, it's, you always had good anglers around you, but of course, back in them days, no one wanted to tell you anything unless you really knew them. And, you know, you, you, when I came, a little 10 year old kid come into this swim, everything was hidden up. And it was, you know, it was sort of, it was all a guessing game. But yeah, as I sort of fished, you know, more like, moved down to the sort of Stour Valley lakes down there, and you sort of met up with a few, you know, like, more people that are sort of more well known in the angling. And, things that have been spinning around in your head for maybe 10 years, you know, and answers and questions and that, it sort of, a lot of it gets tidied up in your mind, you know, which I thought was great. The thing is with Collingbrook back in there, though, like, you know, putting it in perspective that, I suppose it was about three and a half years it didn't do a bite in the night on a Friday, you know, it was sort of, that was the sort of, you know, statistics of a night bite down there. So, it, you know, people fished hard from four o'clock in the morning till the evening and then evening time it was good to sort of swap ideas and, because, you know, back then it was a blank canvas. No, they didn't eat bait the fish, you know, it was a case of you just went what you could go on. You know, some years it done 10 bites to everyone, you know, and it's, it was, yeah, it made, it's say a social scene, it was just good, it's good, you know, like-minded people, really. And yeah, so it was, you know, it was always good, always, you know, someone happy to see you. There were just top bunch of fellas fishing it, and I mean, in angling ability and in characters and, you know, human beings, to be honest. Collingbrook was great and I loved it and you know some best years of fishing of my life but it's the busyness and you know it does now you know everyday carp fishing you do get a lot of the sort of you know the bitchiness that comes with it and everything else and I don't know just you know there was a couple of other lakes at the time you know I really wanted to fish and you know and they were great and I just it was just it was a whole new world to me suddenly you know you had 40 acres of water with a great big carp and no one else was really fishing it and you know to me I could sort of you know you, with your fishing, you could do more with it, you know. You could, you know, you, I don't know, I just find it a lot less cramped in, you know. And to me, it just opened my eyes, really, you know, and thought this is, you know, everything I really love in carp fishing. Just that sort of solitude and that, you know, you and the fish. And that's just, you know, priceless to me, absolutely priceless, you know. Got a little bit despondent a couple of years ago because a lot of our good fish died off, you know, like it, it, it's sort of an end of an era sort of thing. And I almost felt that, like, you know, crikey, this is it, it's the end, you know, it was a really bad year, wasn't it? You know, we lost a lot of the good fish, but, you know, nature is how nature is. It sort of, there seems to be more popping up, you know, that aren't really fish for, and you don't have to pay six, seven hundred quid a year to fish for them, you know? I'll just be carrying on as much as I can do this, you know? You, you know, you think it's coming to an end, but then, like I say, another water comes up on the radar and another fish, and it's got another little story to tell of how it got there, and it's, you know, it's sort of superb.